Okay, we're, we're sort of, we're in the pre-show. Very short <laughs> pre-show tonight because uh, we're just trying to get our stuff together. Get your shit together. <laughs> Always trying to get the shit together. Uh, Never ends. Story of our lives. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, I can shut been... everybody up from here. I was gonna say, why I are you muting me? We could be muted. <laughs> just want to see if it would work. <laughs> and the power grab begins. <laughs> Listen here, I know the password too. It's kind of fun. Aww. <sighs> Hello, Thomas. Do we have a person? We have a person. We have a person? Because I haven't like, logged on to what it said yet. I don't know. I can't look at the stream on line on Facebook and talk at the same time. It freaks me out. Oh okay. no, you mute yourself on yeah. the on the one on the, the Facebook. Yeah, mute yourself on Facebook and go to the stream yard and uh, on the right side you'll see all the uh, comments. Hopefully. That's how it works for us. Hey Mick. Oh <laughs> okay, I didn't even know. <laughs> Science. Yeah, if we had to look at Facebook the whole time. I get my eyes would be crossed. <laughs> Hi, I'm a grad student. I know what I'm doing. I swear. <laughs> Nobody our age should be expected to know how to do these things. Oh, yeah, but I'm a, a librarian. Friend. I don't get a pass. <laughs> I have a friend right now who uh, is going for his master's degree, and he's already using it against us. Like, Listen here, you <laughs> almost graduated with a master's degree. I know more than you. And I'm just, I look at him going, "No, we." Fog, we both know what you mean by this. No, you don't. You just have a piece of paper that makes you, you know, BS a little further now. Actually, Demand the, a little more. The more you get through, the farther you get through a grad program, the more you realize you actually don't know. <laughs> you just, you feel your IQ going down a little, little by little. And I mean, it's business. He got, he went for like business management, oh, yeah. structure and like coding and website design and stuff like that, which is something he's already been doing for 10 years. Yeah. So it's just a formality really for him. He's like, nah, I got the paper. <laughs> That's how the library degree is for a lot of librarians. They've been doing it for years, but they need yeah. the degree to progress. It's kind of like, a, I guess, a jurisprudence for lawyers. It's, it's kind of like now you can teach being a lawyer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's hard. My mom has one, but I mean, it's just like. <laughs> I mean, they're not easy to do, but some of them are a little more functional than others. Yep. Uh, All right. Well, okay, it's... one second. I'm being asked a question here. One second. Oh. Add destination? What? Oh, you just click the link and it should pop up. <laughs> I am so confused. I don't know. I hope. I don't know. Come on, Tiffany. I can't figure this out. Ah. Uh, I wish I could see your page. Okay. Well, Jack, so. you uh, you work that out, and uh, <laughs> I will start uh, the show. Start the cool. show. And I'm going to do my little the Cody thing over here. Uh -huh. He's going to look very busy and tippy type when he's not really doing anything. <laughs> Let's see if I can make this work. Well, hello! Once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection! Broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer! Hello, hello! <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello! <laughs> and we have with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So, once again, we are here to talk, oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely, because that's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. Aww. That was great. That was wonderful. I told you I was you, trying to get fancy. You've been busy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Welcome to the show. I'd like to uh, shout out immediately to uh, our friends, Thomas, Mick, and Rita, who have already chimed in and are 
commenting in the comments there on Facebook. Uh, how's everybody doing? Doing pretty good. Surviving. <laughs> Getting through. And uh, we were talking about getting our uh, education or not. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. yes. Completely. Totally. Yeah, it All is. The education. That is something that is entirely personal, and I would never push one person one way or the other because that is a big decision. Yeah, yeah. I have, I'm a college dropout myself. Hey, <laughs> nothing wrong with that either. I was too until I was 36. So, yeah. And that, I, I did go back to school at about that age, except not to college. I, I went to uh, ITT, uh, which doesn't exist anymore. Really? Are they gone? Are they gone? They are, they are gone. Um, it was unaccredited. Uh, and uh, they, they tried to downplay that, but they were going to get you a job right out of school and blah, blah, blah. I promise, promise. Uh, but it actually worked out for me. Um, by the time I was in my final six-week set of classes, I had gotten a job through another student who was going to school with me. And, you know, it's a good place to to what do they call that? Network. Network. Yep. Uh, if you're at least in a class with a few people who are taking it seriously. Um, but it was definitely not the same experience as college. <laughs> um, but it paid off. Um, it was it was expensive compared really? to I, I'd gone to uh, what was Southwest Texas State um, straight out of high school. And uh, ITT was by the hour, more expensive than Southwest. Uh, but it was only, a, you know, I get in and out in two years. So the uh, that, that was part of the, the value of paying more. You could get out and go back to work faster. Uh, okay, so I always thought they were less expensive than conventional college. So I thought that was part of the draw was the... Um, I'm sure that they are less expensive... Uh, per course because they're pushing courses, pushing you through courses much faster. How many were you taking a semester? Oh, are there semesters? Or is no. it just... No, it's, oh, it's, okay. uh, it's six weeks and six weeks and six weeks and six weeks until you're done. Oh. There's no summer. There's no vacation. <laughs> there's no summer. There's no summer anymore. <laughs> All the parts of college you hate condensed <laughs> down into something barely obtainable. Oh, I know. <laughs> Hard to swallow. <laughs> but you get through it fast. I mean, right, right. That was that was the the push really to get through it fast and get into a career, which actually worked for me. Uh, but I, I am the exception, uh, not the rule. Um, but yeah, I was able to pay off my student loans, and uh, I. I I guess I was lucky, uh, much luckier yeah. than than when I tried to do the the actual college thing. I found that it was because it was slower, uh, and there were so many other distractions, and I was younger, and my ADHD made it mm -hmm. really impossible to uh, get what I felt like I should have been accomplishing. Yeah, so, no, I get it. That's why I couldn't do it either back then. I was 19 when I started and I dropped out after a semester and a half. You know, I was more stubborn than that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I took my sophomore year three times. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, well, by, by the third year, I was like freshman year, I made it through. Sophomore year, not so much. By the third year, I was take, retaking the classes from the second year. Uh, and not doing much better. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that's, that's Sorry. when I gave it up. Yeah, it's when you got it. was my was my hardest point. And math. Uh, no, it's not even it's not math. math. It's, it's simple, simple math. math. The hard part is reading the paragraph. Well, the pages worth of paragraphs, figuring out what the question honestly is, because most of what you're doing in the first set of uh, classes is auditing questions. So basically, you're trying to figure out what they did wrong because the books don't match. And so, which, Ugh. yeah, first off, yes. Um, <laughs> second year of accounting is a br 
threes because it's pretty much what I already do with like steam chests and whatnot. It's like it's cost of goods accounting. It's like you take raw material. Well, now you've crushed it up into usable material. How much does it cost now? And then, oh, you move it to the next section of like, oh, now you've made it into ingots or something. Now, what does it cost at this point? What does it cost at the next step in the production line each step? And for some odd reason, a lot of accountants have a hard time with that kind of accounting. But I'm an industrialist, apparently, because that was just that was my that was my shit. I'm like, oh, man, I got this. And I had a question in my, for my professor and I was sitting in her office and she had two other uh, two other people in front of me waiting for questions. And they were talking about this. And I'm like, oh, I know exactly what that is. That is so easy. So she comes out after talking to another professor or another another student. And she's like, Frank, why are you why are you working with my with my uh, master levels? What, what are you doing? Why, why are you teaching my master's class here? You know, my master's students. I'm just like, they don't understand cost accounting. I got it. They're helping me with the questions I have on freaking auditing. I don't understand. <laughs> so it was fantastic. I loved it. It was, she thought that was hilarious because here I am not doing a great job in her class, but I'm teaching her class, her students. No. Well. Sometimes you find something that, you know, clicks in your, in your brain. Math does, I have dyscalculia. So I took developmental math and then my core, my actual core requirement was math for liberal arts, which is basically how to count your tips and balance your checks, but checkbook. And they and should be was, teaching that in high school. <laughs> like literally. It was, it was actually a really helpful class, but yeah, that was the highest. Yeah. I, I'm in the humanities for a reason. I don't do science and numbers not mine yeah nope i was really good at math but i took one accounting class at at southwest and it wrecked me yeah, not no. because of math but because all of these forms all of these bizarre useless intricate what are these forms for how are they supposed to go together i don't know we are debits and credits backwards oh my god Oh no! It's because when you're looking at it from the perspective of your customer, or you are you the bank in this question? If you're the bank, a credit is a debit, and if you're a customer, the credit's a debit. It's backwards. And oh, so half the time you're looking at the question, trying to just figure out what side of the question do you stand on from your perspective. And <laughs> it was always entertaining. I actually messed it up completely my first semester because they had it taught by someone they brought in to teach because they had more people taking accounting that one year than, um, than they had teachers. So they took a graduate student who graduated the right year prior to come in and teach it and utterly wrecked my whole idea on it. I had to take accounting <laughs> one, three times. Oh, no. Yeah, like, I, like undo the damage she did and then yeah. actually learn it by a guy named Dr. Sunderman who sundered your grade and... Yeah, you, you, you were allowed to you were allowed to make a mistake twice in a test, and then other than that, you were failed. He created accountants, though. But what was hilarious is his his doctorate was in the clarinet, and he never actually t did counting in the real world except for his church. So, uh, so I found a different professor after him to teach me accounting for the third time, and that was a woman who uh, her name was her first name was. Nazi, N-A-Z-I. And so first off, oh, I didn't no. choose her to begin with. And it's actually pronounced <laughs> Nazi. Nazi, and, yeah. But it, it, it was one of those things you're looking at, you're reading, like, which professors are you going to take? Well, I'm definitely skipping that one. And <laughs> honestly, I should have taken it from her because she was awesome. She she actually worked in New York for like 20 years and at like in these major firms. And so she had all this just knowledge and you could get her easily off track. And just talk about whatever any you know for about twenty minutes. I took accounting too in a summer semester, so we were in there for six hours a day. And yeah, then we, and then we were in the library for another six hours a day. I picked up smoking for two weeks during this time period with my good friend I was with, and Randy and I would go out like during the breaks and sit out and start smoking, and then she would come out and start smoking, and then we were not allowed to talk about accounting while we were out there. And then after that, we went back inside and then basically tortured ourselves for another 20, 30 minutes. But it, it was, I look back on it, it was fun. And I, I recommend it to anybody who likes self torture and wants to. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing this was back in the. Could you go back to talking to your, your guest, Faye? Uh, her devices are not connected. 
Yeah. And she needs I'm... to give herself her computer needs to get permissions. She needs to, to allow use it. Use them on the site. It should just be a button. Yeah, yeah. And it, she, she's been sending me some things, and it's like her Chrome device is having issues. But is she actually in uh, the waiting room at the moment? Um, she's listed, but it, there's a big warning sign that says "devices not connected." Devices not connected. Yeah, it should have just popped up and. That's just why oh. I wish I had more time on work this be, before. <laughs> um, um, she may want to. Uh, uh, reload the website. Re reload the web page if it's not asking her for those permissions, just to to get it to re restart. Yeah, yeah. She do shuts down the earlier. browser. Yeah. I don't. I don't even have to shut down the browser. I just need to like uh, reload the page. And it should. Yeah. Hopefully. Meanwhile, <laughs> we'll talk about what we're drinking. Okay. <laughs> Blue stocking. You drinking anything? I am um, Angry Orchard, which is my favorite, but I got oh. the Harvest Fall pack, and so I got the Sinful. <laughs> it's supposed to be cinnamony, but it's kind of like a vaguely cinnamony candy apple. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. I was expecting more of a cinnamon punch, you know, like mm. burn my face, oh. but it's all right. Oh, so you're looking for uh, like a... Um... Angry balls. <laughs> or I was gonna say fireball. <laughs> right. It's speaking of fireball. Angry, angry orchard and fireball together. <laughs> it's angry balls. I hate you. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like it sounds like a, a an arsonist's night well, an arsonist's dream right there. <laughs> let's go let's go light an orchard on fire. Can you imagine how well that would smell? It's more like uh -huh. Christmas and Thanksgiving. Oh. I was wandering Christmas around Christmas in despair. Uh, Las Vegas at their their one and only steampunk convention, uh, and uh, me and everybody who was with me was drinking Angry Balls, and we got so smashed. So many stories to tell from that weekend. Oh, it was great, but that that'll mess you up. Yeah, it's it sounds like high, it. higher alcohol than just the cider and the yeah. sugar. So it's a uh, that's a super. hangover. <laughs> yeah, the sugars that'll wreck your brain in the morning. Well, well, what are you drinking, Bex? Uh, I am. I am not drinking alcohol tonight. Really? Tribute to Rita, who doesn't drink alcohol. Um, I am drinking. I am drinking tea from my favorite mug. <laughs> <laughs> the mustache. Um, I am drinking uh, Winter Smoke, which is their their labeled their branded title for uh, a Russian caravan. Yep. Which is uh, a, a rich, dark, uh, uh, smoky tea. Um, the last time I made it was the first time that I made it with tea, as opposed to putting it in whiskey. Um, <laughs> and I'm sitting at the table with, with Erica, and she's like, do you smell a campfire? Is something burning? And I just, I'm like, no, my tea is on fire. What? Who's who makes it? Um, tea punk teas. Thanks, ah, Jack. okay. Yeah, uh, you can get. You, usually, I get a, a few of their samples with my steam chest delivery once a month. Nice. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I usually get a Daggio, and they have um, a bonfire tea that smells like yeah, it has that same mm. nice woody yeah wood smoky smell so you can go to their website and you can order like a massive 20 dollars 10 of this stuff okay or it was you can like, get it for... it's only like 11 dollars well there's plus <laughs> shipping these days but i mean like i mean it's delicious and it's worth it if you know what you want that's the one thing with steam chest is that we send out these little tens and it's like two or three cups that you can have out of these little tens plus they're an awesome little tin for whatever reason and i mean fact probably has them running around all over his house at the moment <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but, I mean, they're the perfect size for using for, like, um, like battery packs and whatnot for gear that you want to light up. You can easily drill holes in them and close it. They're, it's an encasement, so it's easy to hide and keep, you know, keep uh, keep all your stuff together. Put your mustache also, wax in it. Yeah, mustache wax, <laughs> cyanide pills, and all the kind of fun stuff. Anything you need. Anything you need. <laughs> 
your, your radioactive leeches that the necro professor happens to just leave around at your house when he's there. Bastard. I'll never get those out of the rug. But, Jack, uh, you got a drink? Yes, I do. Uh, speaking of Fireball, it's not Fireball, but I'm pulling out the uh, 1835 uh, bourbon, and it's got oh. the cinnamon whiskey liquor. And so it's not as it's, it's not as angry as Fireball whiskey. Not as balls it's to the wall. It's heavy, Fireball. like, melange feel to it. So I've been really enjoying Dune lately, so I've been, I've been kind of hitting up my... Uh, <laughs> my, my 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 cinnamon stuff it's this is a lot more cinnamony and so it's it's not like it's gonna burn you to death but it definitely tastes like christmas and it would be fantastic in hot chocolate like i'm looking forward to it getting cold well soon hopefully maybe any update on your uh your guest Faye there? so she's every time she goes to it oh wait there's it's just showing like it's the login to the actual website like Started an account, but uh, I think I may see what. Let's see, I I uh, you're using the same link that I sent you, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I have just uh, kicked her from the stream because she wasn't there anyway. But if that was causing a problem, maybe that'll fix it. I don't know. I see she's got yeah she's got she sent me a screenshot of what's going on and it it looks like she's got some shields at the bottom of the screen where the computer's like do you mean for this to be taken over I'm like tell them yes <laughs> agree to everything <laughs> agree to everything we'll read the fine print later it's fine it's fine <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of contracts like that you don't know it's all right it's all right it's cool let's go worry about the details later it's a firefight you want my help you sign on the dotted line I shoot the people. And we'll figure out what it actually says afterwards. Yeah, that escalated. <laughs> always escalates quickly in here. Hello, Johanna, uh, who is drinking hot chocolate or bourbon mm -hmm. or both. You both know, is good. Hot chocolate bourbon. Why isn't that a thing yet? It is at my house. I mean, okay, so I, maybe not in the same bottle at the same time. That does sound pretty bad. Like, to, to, to buy it as that way. Outside of unless it was, like, bourbon-flavored hot chocolate made by the people who do, um... The hell? Why can't I come up with it? The Irish cream... Bailey's? Yeah. See? That would they be... They don't even have one. I actually have... Yeah, I think their, they do. I have some red velvet cake. Bailey's, which is... Right there, really? oh, it's, it's good. Oh, yes. It, I mean, I like red velvet. Just, but... Huh? If you I like, like red, red velvet, it's good. There's something about, for some odd reason, there's a specific flavor that, that is different than just chocolate cake that the red dye that comes from a beetle makes, I guess. If people don't know that, red dye comes from a beetle that climbs on cactuses. That explains why it's in German chocolate cake. Actually, no. It is illegal <laughs> to use in food in many other countries because a lot of people are allergic to it. So you find out that you're allergic to red food, it's most likely because of that dye. The dye. Yep. The more you know. <laughs> well, they used to use red dye and M&M's, a certain red dye and M&M's, and then had to stop, I think. That's they why M red M&M's were gone for a while in the 70s. Yeah, and because then... they were getting away from using a, a, a beetle. Ah, okay. Yeah. Something a little more eco-friendly than let's just terrorize a whole bunch of red beetles and grind them up like some twisted, tormented Akuna Matata. I will never eat red M and M's again. Well, no, no, they're they're now they're now okay. I think actually, yeah, aren't, in my head. <laughs> aren't most M and M's almost vegan these days? I, 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 I think I could be I wrong. Don't, Don't quote me on that, but I think that they're. Yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah, well, that's that. That just goes with me anywhere. <laughs> All right, so she's still having issues. I may reschedule her for sure. Okay. Um. Bummer. Yeah, that's too bad. I was looking forward to that. And she's fun. She's a lot of fun. Barrel monkey's fun. 
fit right <laughs> in. Just just right over here. Or over here. There's a lot of blank space on either side of me. <laughs> I, I, my, my ego can take all this space. I just like to share it sometimes. Aw, you're a giver. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, do we have homework? Um, I know what Jack's bringing. Y- oh. Yes. Actually, I have two things because oh, I watched. Wait. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm 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 gonna wait and wait until C because I don't know if anyone else is gonna talk about that because I already have a thing. I don't want to talk about two things unless no one else talks about it. So. I. I do have home. Yeah, I. It's the what I. <clears throat> I had two for last time, but I obviously I only did the one, so I have something for tonight too. Okay. All right. Well, I have what Jack has. But when I found out Jack had it, I had to find another thing. So I'm good. <laughs> uh, Blue Stocking, since you've been holding on to yours since two weeks ago, do you want to uh, reveal sure. it before it goes stale? Okay. Yeah. Um, there is, if you know, okay, it's a book, obviously, um, because it's me. There is an author called Natasha Pulley. And a few years ago, she wrote the, the Watchmaker of Filigree Street which was about um it was about a oh no i pushed the wrong button sorry oh, switched us all around i feel like i'm in the brady bunch all of a sudden oh there we go <laughs> i figured it out oh now it's me my head is very big okay um natasha pulley wrote the watchmaker of filigree street a few years ago and it was about a, a, Lond- a clerk in london who ends up with this pocket watch that ends up saving it's a magical pocket watch it saves his life so he tries to figure out where it came from and he meets the watchmaker who is uh, a japanese a japanese watchmaker and the watchmaker is special he can see time in a way that other people can't and so great many adventures ensue and they end up falling in love which obviously is not acceptable in late 19th century london society so they have to keep things on the down low but um, she wrote that, and then she followed it up with a book called The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, where they have to travel to Japan. Um, she wrote another book after that, but the recent one, the one that I actually want to talk about, it's called The Kingdoms. And basically, Natasha Pulley loves alternate histories. So this is in England, where the French won at Waterloo, and England is now an occupied country. But the problem is that the main character, he gets off the train at what's supposed to be King's Cross Station, but it's it's in French. It's Garde de Raw. I can't speak French. But he gets off the train station, has no memory of who he is. None. But and so he gets taken in and he finds out that there's this, that this is a particular type of amnesia. But he has memories of the way England is supposed to be and the wife that he's supposed to have. And so it's it's steampunk adjacent. But it's, I'm not very far into it because I haven't had a lot of time, but it is so good because he's trying to figure out how England became, you know, went from the England that he knew to a, you know, to a French colony. But true to form, all the rebels are in Scotland and they're the ones that are rebelling against the French occupation. But all through England, the street signs are in French. Um, the government is entirely French. If you're caught speaking English, then you are suspect and they may come for you. So it is it is really, really good. Like I said, I'm not very far into it yet, but she's really good at writing the alternate history. And, uh, you know, we've got to figure out how the world changed and, you know, whether what Joe is seeing in his head is actually the way it's supposed to be and not the world that he's in now, so... That's my homework. Yeah, it's she's a she, Natasha Pulley is excellent <clears throat> at the alternate history. And her first three books, um, they kind of all tied together in loose and weird ways. So I'm as the further I get into this, I'm hoping that this one is going to connect to the other three. Like something happened with the watchmaker that changed the world, maybe. I don't know yet, but yeah, her book I highly recommend all of her books. She's got four of them, and that they are excellent. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So good. They're they're bonkers, all of them. <laughs> and yeah, and she's she's a historian uh or, or does a lot of historical research. Yeah, she's more, yeah. more than I would understand. So she'll, you know, 
keep me strung along because yeah. I've read some books that were supportive, supposed to be sort of historical fictions. And I knowing very little was <laughs> immediately turned off by how not historical or, or accurate it, they were They're kind of goofy. Yeah. These but are definitely you, alternate. Yeah. I, I, I expect, you know, she's, she must be pretty good. These are good. definitely alternate histories. Um, and the, the first two, like I said, the watchmaker of filigree street, the he sees time he sees all permutations like dr the whole dr strange thing where he saw you know every okay, kato shimizu sees all of time every permutation of what can happen so it makes his life really difficult makes it hard to find love and it makes it hard to even just you know exist because he knows everything that's going to happen and so that's how the yeah it's so the new one is Kingdom, and it's really good, but all of them are, they're just, they're well-written, and they're beautiful, and, you know, her characters are, I think they're very well-written, and they're very believable, even in these unbelievable situations. They're human. I like books that make humans right. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people just come across as so two-dimensional on yeah. the page, you know, and so she's got a lot of depth to them. So. I have a lot to. I have actually have a lot to talk about that here shortly on my product as well. One reason I love it so much. Well, that's my homework. So. Very well, very good. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I was I was uh, sort of half on another page looking for the kingdom, but all I find is the movie, which has nothing to do with what you're talking about. Um, yeah, the, so the author is Natasha Pulley, P-U-L-L-E-Y. Oh, see, Google knows. Yeah, and the, this, like I said, this latest one is The Kingdoms. Oh, okay, that's my mistake. Gosh, uh, let's see if I can... Yep. Cool. Okay. The Kingdoms. Natasha Pulley. Got it. All right. Good report. Ooh, that's a link even. Wow, we're so professional. We are getting fancy. <laughs> you can find it on Amazon forward slash Kingdoms dash Natasha dash Pulley. And that should pull it right up. Those of you who can't see the screen, because I know we have some of those people. You know, just Google it. But, but don't look for Jamie Foxx. That's the wrong one. <laughs> <They're all laughs> oh. Do you want to go or shall I go? Um, I'll go. I'm quick, and I know you've got all sorts of things to chew on. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, if you remember Cirque du Soleil before the shutdown, we all couldn't go out anymore. Uh, they had this uh, steampunk inspired show called Curios. It's not hmm. new. Uh, it came out in 2014, but uh, they they've recently started uh, touring again. Really, performing it again, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, let's see if I can find a little more about it. Um, I happen across it again. Uh, through Steampunk Explorer, which I cannot recommend enough. It's a website, uh, a website yeah. with the, the latest news. Um, but it is, uh, we, we went to see it when we, when we had the chance, uh, they were coming through and, uh, we saw it in Houston and, uh, live is, is just, you know, the best way to see it. Um, were all the so, dancers like a big co like, like cogs in a machine? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, there's a lot of props, a lot of uh, uh, gears, and you know, old typewriters and, and turbines and light bulbs and stuff. Really? Uh, I interesting. love Cirque du Soleil. I saw them in Las Vegas in '95. They're so amazing live. Uh, this seen... one's about a 19th century inventor who uh, encounters characters from another dimension. 
uh, including a handyman and an aviator and uh, weird deep sea creatures and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, That's awesome. Could... Wait, what's the name of it? The show? Curios. K U R I O S. I remember hearing about this and was very happy about it, but I've not actually seen it. I'm going to have to see if I can find some bootleg YouTube on it. <laughs> uh, no, the shaky cam boot, boot, bootleg YouTube. Right, yeah. It was obviously hiding in some guy's armpit who like halfway turned. Oh, wow. Cabinet of Curiosities, that's amazing. Hmm. And... Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, search to Soleil's uh, backslash curious. Uh, but what's cool, uh, particularly to me right now, is I was I was going through YouTube like I do all day because I don't like my job, and I found the whole thing streaming on YouTube. Really? It's obviously it's not as good as going to see it live. Yeah. But but it's there. And it's free on YouTube right now. Uh, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's that's sort of my report or my <laughs> suggestion to go look for. Um, even though it's it's not new, but it is now available again. It's new to is, me. Which is fun. <laughs> so by all means, check that out. We we should. I, I will actually. I want to be uh, very yeah. Thank you for very bringing good. that back to our attention. It's about an hour and a half long, so you know, uh, either give yourself that much time or watch it in segments. Okay. Okay. I guess it's up to me now. I'm gonna carry us home. I got 30 minutes to do it. No I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Thax has watched it, and I was very happy about it on on the the, the thing. So I'm happy he didn't decide. Nope, I'm going to talk about it since I watched it first. But, also, uh, to talk about it. <laughs> as long as it's being talked about, we're okay. So those of you who've been on Netflix lately have probably come across this thing called Arcane, and it is an animated TV show based on a game called League of Legends. Well, oh. The game is actually a, what's the right word for it? It's based on an old map in an older game called Warcraft 3. And it, the way the map worked, this, ha, this actually does come back around, so just bear with me. I didn't here. know they were connected, yeah. Yeah, okay, well, there was a custom map you could play in Warcraft 3, which, if everyone, if anyone has ever played it, it's, an, it's a real-time strategy game where you're top-down looking at all your units and you can control them, you know, tell them where to go and do whatnot. Well, some modern group got together and said, let's make this map where there's three trails that meet at different ways on this map, but they're all about even. And there's little troops that run out and basically cancel themselves out in the middle of the map. And so you, as the one unit you can now control, you can now go get upgrades and whatnot once you have killed enough of these other units and kind of push the wave up into the enemy's territory and you take down their castles. Well... They took that idea and decided to make an entire game out of it, which is now an entire genre of games called MOBA. Uh, mobile, I'm a, I'm a gamer and I play them and I don't remember what it stands for, but um, essentially it's five on five and your job as the hero is to push the, you know, to push the, the initiative and win by outfoxing the other team and getting, you know, making sure they make all the mistakes and you win. Well, the funny thing about all this is that it's a really simplistic idea. I mean, there's plenty of strategy involved in the actual game. Don't, don't let me tell you, it's, it's, it's easy. But it, it's actually very hard and very fun and very rewarding and also very, um, well, depending on the group you're playing with, can be very toxic. Uh, League of Legends is also known to be one of the most toxic uh, gaming environments ever because you can actually yell at the other team, which... You can't do that. The other, yeah, I know exactly. So now it's all of a sudden you can just imagine the the hate speech going back and forth. However, I think they fixed some of that. Um, they're trying to change their image, 
And the movie is actually, or the TV show is actually based on a lot of the lore of the characters. Because every time they'd bring out new characters, you're just like, oh, here's a, here's a dude with a steam-powered axe. That's cool. <laughs> it's nicer if you actually have, like, well, here's his entire backstory. And this is actually talks with, and they get together with this person. And they go do whatever over here with, and they fight off this other bad guy, which you can also play. And so it's very integrated in a very MCU-type Marvel way. Or I would like to say more like Magic the Gathering. The card, the card game is one thing, but the lore around the game, which I've never played, I just read a lot of the cards, um, is very deep. And all the stories of the, the world, the lore, the elves, the dwarves, all that stuff comes around. And that's really about how this is working, is it's revolving around some of the more, fam- more, of the more famous characters. And like the one up on the screen here is Jinx. She's apparently, she's got some issues. But she's a very popular character, and uh, I really like the world in which they have built. Now, I'm being told by one of my friends who apparently was a, he played this game a little bit. Uh, He was ranked 10th in the world for the character he played for a good amount of time. And uh, he played Poppy, which is another character that wields a very large hammer and is very short, I think. But um, I haven't run into her very much yet when I'm in my playing of the game. However, the storyline that actually is going on in this is that there is no magic. But suddenly, a guy is saved with his, with his mother from freezing to death by this wizard. Just comes out of nowhere, drops them in a different dimension, and then pulls them back into their dimension somewhere else. Just, and they're saved. And ever since then, as a small child, he's been like, just stuck on how did this work? and has almost cracked the code of figuring out magic in a very mathematical way. And that's kind of talking, that's his plot line. His rise to power is, is this uh, hex tech thing he's got going on. Well, then there's the underground and all the stuff going on there with the, um, Oh, like there's a gangster. There's a, there's a there's a gang war going on essentially, and so a bunch of different pieces are moving really fast in the beginning, and where a lot of your characters are young at this time, getting caught up in it, like um, basically the leader of their faction dies, and they're having to be displaced and hide from the other faction that's moving in, and then it kind of cuts to a couple years later, and you start seeing the changes that were brought. And a bunch of your characters are kind of coming back out of the woodwork and becoming important again to the storyline. And I really like it because it hits these different levels. You have the high society and, you know, it's the classic, you know, everyone's wearing white. It's all clean. It's very coruscant up above. Everything is bright and future is being able to be seen new technology is obviously very apparent because there's this massive building and it's blue and it does cool stuff like shoot airships across the world. And, you know, it's easy to see that where the future's going, but the fact that this is also steampunk and what happens to when you have that much progress, you're obviously having to dump your dead body somewhere or the chemicals or whatever your byproduct of, of progress is. And that's running downhill to, essentially what they call, I think, like, cross the bridge. It's the workers. Yeah. And so it's the it's the area that's not clean. It's dirty. It's grime. It's hidden. It looks very... I'm, I'm going to use this word. I'm going to use it because it fits. It feels like I was walking around in Cyberpunk 2077, but in, steam, in steampunk. Like, they had neon lights. They were off the... It was obviously, you know, neon lights, but done in such a way that would make sense for the time for the time period and the technology, the body modifications that a lot of people had were very steampunk and very well thought through. It wasn't just like, I'm going to draw this big brassy thing with a hinge. No <laughs> intricate bits, the movement, like that, that was the one thing I want to know if they actually had all this modeled on actual people for the movements, because all the movements are very good and very well done. The face, the facial structure, the facial movements for the emotions was just un. 
it wasn't uncanny valley it was beyond it it was still very it was still had that comic bit to it where you can obviously tell it's it's drawn or it looks like a well the whole freaking show looks like a, a an oil painting in movement but i don't know one of the characters is crying and she starts having the gut-wrenching sobs and it felt real like the, the voice actor was perfect it wasn't just like the whole little anime tee hee in my hand i'm gonna put my hands over my face and you know ball in my hands this was obvious pain and well done and just all the characters have this ability you can look in their eyes and it's, there's just this belief and trust and truth and it feels weird it feels like there's actually a person there and not an animated figure and so i'm really wondering if they had ray tracing not ray tracing what the hell uh facial tracing for it but uh i, I see facts that you're twitching <laughs> um, the, the net, Netflix has broken these down into three episode segments Chunks. that they're releasing three at a time. Mm -hmm. So you can't watch the whole show yet. Yeah. Uh, you can watch the first three and then just this week they released the second three. I've already watched and, them all. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ooh, you watched six. Okay. So did I. Ooh. Um, and my, my first impression or my first thoughts when watching the first three was that this was a very sort of rote uh, set of plots. You, you know, you've got your, your, your upper class versus the lower class and there's a class struggle mm -hmm. and um, they got some gangs of New York sort of stuff going in there and there's nothing really new, but as Jack was saying, they did it so good. They the, I don't think I don't think it was uh, rotoscoped. I think the they just have really good artists yeah. and uh, um, high resolution uh, um, animations that are very smooth and clean. It's it's just really really good. They paid a lot of attention <laughs> to how someone's face works and really were able to pull it off. And then the technology really works. And there's technology they haven't even explained yet. And there's, and, and they may not. I mean, yeah, it's I, I don't care. Of, it's I'm just happy with the fact that, like, <laughs> a new character walks in, and all of a sudden, like, part of their shoulder like opens up, and there's this tube of purple stuff, and you can see the obvious purple stuff drain into their shoulder, and then thing pops back in, and you can see that they're all pissed off and about to kick your ass. You're like, oh, well, that, well this is new. <laughs> this is going to be painful, and you know, just pr proceeds to like literally chunk all your characters overhanded through walls. And I mean, you know, they, it's, I don't know. There's enough in it that made me feel like when I was watching Sherlock Holmes, I think it was the second one, the one where they're after the, literally like the little device, the, um, it's a switch, essentially a radio beacon thing. It was the, the technology at the time that's going to set off the, the bomb, but it was just always like the little, like the little vignette stories of every time he shows up at a new place and the way that all the interactions work with the characters. And then the music is perfect too. Um, they got Imagine Dragons to do the music. And uh, so it is. That took me some time to, to get used to. I felt that it that, that kind of, it felt weird. Sort of <laughs> but it feels thinking, right. Like, but, but I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I really do feel like they were able to pull a pull together a version of steampunk that wasn't just the. This is obviously a fantasy story. We just added technology to it and glued it, some gears on. Yeah, it didn't feel like they glued gears in it. Like the way everything felt like it was naturally baked in together, and we're running into a lot of heads here. You have the the industrial complex. You have the people living in the dark the dark grunge, and it really felt like kind of a cyberpunk world, but done right for like what steampunk was. You had a very vibrant underground and it wasn't just a whole bunch of people running around in dirty clothes. Um, <laughs> it, which is what I get from a lot of movies that are doing the underground thing. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, people have color. People will like, people have their little things they'll do. And this is very, this is very much like every character has something to them. Even, even the, the generalist, I guess the, the 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 grunt police officers. Each one is a little different. Their 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 armor is a little different, and so I'm I'm very happy to see that it wasn't just like oh, we're just going to have you know 
CGI stormtroopers the entire time. But like one of them gets their, their face mask ripped off. And I don't think I've ever seen that guy since there was, you know, he had a face and now hopefully he's a character later. I don't know. He might be. And, uh, <laughs> he might be dead. But... <laughs> and also from the game perspective, all the characters that they're showing that are playable are free to play right now for the release of the TV show. So it's kind of everyone. They're getting a whole new group of people in that interested in the game. Um, and I so... didn't know anything about League of Legends up until now. This is my introduction to. Yeah. To that. No, and that's and that's, that's kind of the you're getting a lot, too. Yeah, I follow cosplayers who are clearly more hip on the trends than I am, and I'm like, "That's who that is." Yeah, that's Jinx. Well, that's Obviously, the, the girl with a mile worth of freaking braided hair. But like, wow, that must be even longer if she unbraided it. But uh, yeah, I've heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it. So now I kind of want to watch it. I, I feel it's... like nobody really, based on what Jax told me of the the uh, background of League of Legends, there's nothing to know. Right. Yeah. There wasn't a pl story or plot up until There's now. There's no plot to the game other than PvP on a map that's the same. That literally hasn't changed much since World of Warcraft. So and... they're establishing canon from from nothing right now. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. No. Me. The whole. Well, actually, the, there's all there is a book like this thick on the lore for all the characters and how their stories interact. So there is. They're not pulling this out of thin air. They're just writing it down and putting it into story form now in a oh. coherent fashion other than just let's go read Jinx's stuff or let's go read Jace's uh, storyline and see how it interacts with all of them. They're actually putting a timeline to it where they're making it work, which is what I'm very interested in because a lot of the characters we've seen aren't the characters they are in the game yet. And so I'm, I'm interested in seeing how they transform because... So I, I haven't have played question. the game a lot either, but I'm, in, I'm enjoying all this. I have a question because you, you know a little more about the game or maybe that history than I do because I know nothing. But in the first three episodes, with a few exceptions, everybody is human. Mm -hmm. There's that high council, uh, the, the governors. One of them is this scientist who's been alive forever. He's a tiny guy with big whiskers. He's clearly not human. And there's another one who's some sort of a robot or a cyborg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, the really thin dude with the mouth thing. Right. <laughs> but but everybody else is a human, I think. But there are and some then, moments where you'll see other people. Set of, the second set of episodes, this three, four through six. Yeah. You, you're suddenly introduced. You're, you're back in the lanes, the lower class. And there are a lot of fish people. Yeah. <laughs> They're just kind of out of nowhere. Why? Why? What happened? <laughs> so here's the thing on that. There, why uh, as I was being as I was being told a little bit that we're only seeing one city on this planet, and so there are a lot of other cities where a lot of other characters will come from, and one of them is very Roman, and it doesn't have the technological uh, the technological bit of this city does. So therefore, it's very much still Centaurian Centaurian Republic essentially. And there's a couple of the characters that have come from there that were um, gladiators that are in the game. Um, so I know there are more worlds that we haven't really seen yet in the TV show, for sure. We're only looking at okay. one city-state, essentially. So between and... the first set and the second set of episodes, um, I I'm not really spoiling any important plot points, but... Uh, Magic and technology are being merged, which has allowed them to open portals to other places. They don't mm -hmm. really talk about where those other places are, but are can we assume that this this these fish people are are uh, coming from from other cities mm -hmm. and and putting up setting up shop in in the city that we're we're learning about here. Either that or they were there and they just weren't in the other episodes yet, too, because um, there are like kind of like the founder, the founding father is basically a fuzzy Yoda. Um, yeah, he, he's like a Pomeranian mixed with Yoda. That's what he is. And so and he's That's great. Right. Heimerdinger, <laughs> Heimerdinger is an awesome character. And uh, like he has this perpetual 
just love for exploration and whatnot. But um, no, I'm pretty sure it's just that they're blending more and more of the of the culture in. I think the fish people were there already. Kind of like the uh, later episodes, we saw the the, the big um, the mutation. The essentially, it's this um, exolotl that has obviously mutated, and um, this oh, guy, okay. is, yeah, and this guy is basically keeping it alive to preserve the mutation. And we find out a lot of stuff about what's going on there. And, yeah, that and was in a flashback, and I wasn't really entirely clear what was happening then either. So yeah, no, what it was is this was old like one of the characters just ran across this this guy in his basement essentially, um keeping this animal alive. And this guy was uh, essentially a breeder of animals. That was kind of his his thing, but he was looking for certain certain things and in the basically the toxic level of the water around this around certain parts of the city is so high that you're getting some interesting genetic mutations. And so he's like, well, this is a really cool mutation. Let's see if we can stabilize that. And so he finds this exolotl that has a certain genetic mutation that it basically it's, excretes this purple liquid that is um, highly volatile if you drink it or once it's refined. Oh, and, I didn't uh, make that connection. Yeah. So, so oh. that's where that stuff's coming from. And... Uh, yeah, so he became he becomes a drug lord or something. This has got a, a rich, uh, <laughs> complex background that you know I I'm slow on piecing things together sometimes. So yeah, yeah, I, I can recommend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I plan on watching this two or three times through just because there are moments where I need to like I, I just need to pause and hit the record button just for like little cut scenes for my own. Uh, videos for my gaming channel just for the humor that is there or the action moment that's happening it's just it's a perfect little screenshot of time they've really done a good job of just ensnaring moments very well and done, doing them in this it's it's like you could pause it at any time and it's a freaking painting because it, it has that look to it at any moment I have to pause it and just look at the just look at the, the city just look at how they did it and like, how is this even computer generated? Because, you know, you, when you think computer generated, you think very harsh lines and everything's symmetrical or everything looks like it could be obviously generated. No, this has like pastel smears and whatnot. I'm like, how does this work? I don't understand how they pull the, the League really of Legends pretty. art style over into being an actual comic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. Or a TV show. But uh, it yeah. kind of reminds me not not in style but uh, in complexity. You remember uh, Disenchanted? Yeah, where they go to the steampunk world yeah. and you just want to like pause it and look at the background stuff. Yeah, because it's so busy. <laughs> There's things. That's happening. exactly how I feel with this. Except like <laughs> the difference when that one is that one was like obviously making fun. Of, like well, not I'm making fun, but it was obviously stereotypical steampunk of everything was high society. Everything was was this just so. Except for the freak circus, which was obviously a freak circus, but <laughs> it it still felt like a ho ho steampunk. Let's get her tea kind of thing. This feels this feels like there's a section of that, but then there's the working class. There is the yeah. sub working class. There's you know, and then you know all these other different things going on, and I just feel like it's a it feels like a world that Jack himself would actually thrive in, and it kind of is. <laughs> weirdly scary it's like oh, i'd be sitting right there in the gray area between upper class and then the lower scum lords but uh so yeah check it out it's great um i actually did pull up um a trailer if you wanted to go through it it's like two minutes if you wanted to watch it or not or show anybody or we could let just go watch it on youtube it's fine it's just easy it's called arcane yeah, i don't, I don't know how I, I don't know if we're legally able to stream that kind of stuff. I wouldn't put the sound to it. It would just be <laughs> yeah, the same. You know, Maybe, okay. yeah. But, um, but so, it's real pretty. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even do like a whole lot of it. That's just like a little screen. Like, they just stop moments are in it. But anyway, yeah, look it up. It's easy. It's fun. Um, the other one I want to talk about was has anyone seen Jungle Cruise yet? It's yes. Now, it's now free on, on Disney Plus. It's so good. And it feels like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Is trying to is is like I got a lot of like Indiana Jones slash the Mummy vibes 
from it. Yeah. It was oh, really yeah. Fun. With like a little bit of Pirates of the Caribbean thrown in. Like just, that, just yeah. for spice. Yeah, because I got it when they were still charging for it. And I ended up watching the whole of the Mummy movies after that. Yeah, it just has <laughs> that, whole, like, yeah. that so much fun adventure feel of let's go on an adventure. <laughs> yeah, it was everybody. Emily Blunt was fantastic. The whole oh, thing yeah. was just so good. Yeah, highly um, recommend. I, and it's just, it's funny. It's so funny. Yeah, but the amount of dad jokes that were being thrown <laughs> around too. Just made me, like, literally my son and my wife were just looking at me with eyebrows. Just like, really? This is your movie? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, they were great. just all continuous. those jokes are great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was I know really good. good. It had I would I'd call it almost like some sort of like Aztec punk going on in the later <laughs> part of that movie. It was just like well, in the, these big rock things that just oh, and the conquistadors that were mm -hmm. coming after. Oh, they were so well done. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. They were gross. I loved them. <laughs> they were attacked by conquistadors. Yes. Uh, yeah, mummified. we'll just have to shut up now and let him yeah. watch the movie. You need to watch oh, it. It's good. Okay. Uh, all right. Because yeah. it is like, it is pre World War. It's, it's during World War One is the yeah. time period. Um, I had to, I had to make sure of that because I'm sitting there going, the outfits on some of those soldiers does not fit the usual. Uh, oh, it's because it's before then. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah it's. It's definitely worth a watch. It's really good. We have to talk about it more when Thax has seen it. Some more of these people have seen it because I don't want to That's spoil your it homework. because it's really nice when certain things just show up. You're like, what? How? No, this is great. How did I get away from this? That is your homework for the next time. You need to watch Jungle Cruise. Watch Jungle Cruise so we can just talk okay. about it with the spoilers. <laughs> All right. And we've, we've wasted an hour once again. <laughs> done it so let's see i need to uh thank our patreon members uh who have uh elected to help us out and uh pay for our, our streaming hosting on podbean so uh that's uh claire bear uh jenny and ryan shaver uh kitty who's been on here a few times and rita of course uh our our, our first patron thank you all uh, let's see our music is brought to you by zapsplat.com which i'm required to, to say um, obligated now huh if you're not watching us on facebook at texas steampunk connection you can also email us up texas steampunk connection at gmail.com uh and we're uh, a streaming podcast, uh, texasteampunkconnection.podbean.com. We can also be found on uh, iTunes and the Apple Podcast uh, space stuff. It's out there. And, <laughs> and if you lose it on Facebook and you want to watch a remake, a rerun of this show at any point in time, when I finally get all of them posted on, on, on YouTube, you can go find them on Steam Chest. Awesome. We'll, they'll be there shortly. I got a, I got a list of them that are about to just start landing. So I tried to do that, and and uh, YouTube said, "Uh, uh, fifteen minutes or less." I'm like, "Oh, I, oh yeah, you have to you have to get certified and all that kind of stuff." Yeah. Which I which I am. I'm, I'm a professional I'm, YouTubist, apparently. Jack is certifiable. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> touche, sir. And although we've made many many jokes about Twitter, <laughs> I figured out how to post on Twitter. So that when I when I post our, our, our podcast, it shows up there. So you can look for us at TX Stream uh, Steam, Steam Connect One. Oh, Twitter! I don't. I you don't still know made it very difficult. I, I didn't offered, think that. I offered to help Flavio with the Twitter. I'll give you the same offer. I. <laughs> if you need help with the Twitter? Let me know because I'm on there way too much. So. Gotcha. Oh. You're a Twitter junkie. She's a Tweety. A Twitter? A yeah. Twit. She twits. She <laughs> twits on a daily basis. <laughs> all right. I think that's all the... All, all of our obligations? Spilled out there. Uh, does anybody else have anything to add before we sign off tonight? <sighs> um, no, Rita, I have not listened to The Kingdoms on Audible yet, but I do plan to get that, so you need to let me know if it sounds good. So. And I'm going to work and make sure we get our guest on here next week. Uh, I 
didn't think we'd have so much issues because honestly, this seems to be a program that doesn't usually have problems, but I think our computer's having some other, uh, so we'll get that worked out and uh, we'll have her on either uh, in the coming coming episode. Two weeks from today, hopefully. Hopefully. We're expecting. Uh, everybody have a great Thanksgiving if you're in the States. Um, and until not in the States. I don't what? know what you do. Um, you just have Enlighten. regular Thursday supper, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you have lots yeah. of pie. That, that is, it's the pie holiday. It's for the sure. pie holiday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, mind your gauges. Your gauges.